Hello and welcome to some more Star Citizen with more info on the Mercury Star Runner, data running and smuggling as well. This info is from the Mercury Concept Sale page, the associated ship shape, the brochure and the Town Hall Reverse the Verse they held at Gamescom. So some vital statistics of the Mercury, the ship has quite small weapons and light armour comparatively for its size. It is supposed to rely on its speed and agility and getting cargo or data from and to its destination as fast as possible and outrunning ships fleeing them rather than for use in prolonged combat engagements. It has two size 2 shield generators which should be reasonably tanky, a full complement of countermeasures, two size three hardpoint gimbals on the front under the nose with two size twos on each of them and two manned turrets, one up, one down, um, each with two size two weapons. And all those weapons are all laser repeaters as standard. There is also two size two missile pylons coming with four size one missiles total. The ship has data banks and 96 SCU of cargo space separate from that, which is the same as the Constellation Andromeda. It's a medium-sized ship, so it's 40 metres long, 38 metres wide, and 11.6 metres tall at the moment. Obviously, it is being concepted. It can house three crew. This is longer than the Freelancer, which is 38 metres long, but is also extremely wide as a ship and as such has a lot of internal room. The Mercury is available on its concept sale from $200 war bond or 225 store credit. It is available as a CCU or upgrade as well. It appears though that the Herald and Freelancer both are the loaner ships for the Mercury, so you'll get to use both of those until the Mercury is flyable or they change its loaner ship. I couldn't find the end date for the concept sale listed, but it's safe to assume that that will be the 8th of October as uh, the 9th slash 10th of October should be the date they next announce the new concept ship for CitizenCon. The ship is asymmetrical, both interior and exterior, and influenced by the Millennium Falcon, as well as the Hercules Starlifter, which is in the same sort of um, manufacturer. It's both, uh, both of those are, are manufactured, the Hercules and uh, this new one, the Star Runner, the Mercury, by Crusader Industries. The ventilation and duct system in the ship, which again is asymmetrical, allows for the crew to get around the ship in a less conventional way if necessary. The cockpit has great visibility as well. The glass extends below the pilot so you can see underneath uh, the ship so it's got really really great visibility. It's combining the Herald and Freelancer's gameplay on a larger scale. Uh, the ship is about getting cargo or data from one place to another as quick as it can really but it can be used for a multitude of purposes and on paper it's now my favorite multi-role two to three player ship. The ship has a break or recreation room and they want mini games to be able to be played here like hollow chess um, and mini games to be in the game in general. You can have Moby Glass and stuff. Basically things to pass the time during long quantum travels. They also want um, in particular for this ship people to be able to get under that table and into the duct system too. Um, so the ducts run throughout the ship allowing access in a pinch to loads of different areas and they even foresee gameplay where you could be moving contraband around to try and trick customs. There is a habitation room with three beds in there as well. The Mercury is a long range ship. So what can fit inside it? Uh, well, you'll be able to store uh, the bikes, so the Dragonfly X1 and Nox, as well as a Grey Cat inside uh, the Mercury, but it's not big enough for a Cyclone or a Zerova to fit. It also has a wide array of thrusters and VTOLs, making it very suitable for atmospheric use. The brochure suggests the ship can be used as a semi-pro racing ship, so it's going to be pretty, pretty fast. And it has very powerful countermeasures for fleeing and evading. I think the current speed is listed at 2 uh, 115 meters per second when in SCM mode. The ship's supposed to have very powerful countermeasures for fleeing and evading as well. Let's talk about data running. So they gave us some more information about data running throughout this sort of concept, but also in the town hall. Uh, to get data, you're going to need to record or capture it either by downloading it, being given it, or listening into it. Um, so that could be literally intercepting a data stream or two ships communicating or physically taking a drive. This will then take that data it will get encrypted and stored. The Mercury does have a dedicated scanning room suite and avionics. It has dedicated data bank storage, which is 
significantly larger than the Herald's. The Herald might be able to or might have to go for multiple trips to grab some particular or valuable data, whereas a Mercury could spend uh, a bit of longer time and get all of the data from an area without having to do multiple trips from like a, a server or a data stream or something. Other ships may be able to get and store certain types of other data, but typically it's going to be less efficient or uh, storage might cause issues with certain ships. You may be able to intercept data streams and transfer from other players and NPCs data. Typically, this is done at range. Obviously, two ships can choose to transfer data between each other. This could give you locations for things so like asteroid fields or whatever they had locations for in their data banks or um, valuable data as cargo packages. So I'm thinking that uh, uh, some of this stuff might be some data is just seen as high value data to certain people and you could sell that almost like cargo. Scanning things will also get you data too and they're still working out exactly how all of these systems will work but this is sort of like the, the thought process behind that. The data can be deleted and destroyed once the Mercury or Herald has it at the touch of a button if required which is one of the reasons you probably wouldn't want to make a Mercury or a Herald aware if you tr are tracking it um, because it will just delete and purge the data. So yes, yeah, ships might be able to send data to each other, coordinates, info, data as cargo. Ships may have bandwidth or hardware restrictions though on what data they can send and receive, and it might take time to send and receive that data as well. Smuggling and cargo. So there are smuggling compartments under the, the Mercury. There are little cubby holes in the, like the, the ducts. These will be more of an extra secure storage space and are in addition to the 96 SCU cargo bay. And in law, they're intended for spare components. So um, you could store components in there or you could store contraband or whatever um, if you're trying to run that across. There are three one by one compartments. They act as mini cargo areas, which are separate from the ship's main cargo grid. It's gonna be hard to detect what's inside those areas, even if you're scanning for it. And there's the potential of making these areas even better shielded. Scanning a ship in detail will require proximity and time. A good scanner will also help. So customs checks will be a thing in the game. And um, these can be at certain landing zones and checkpoints, but also in space. If you have invested in hiding your contraband, then it may be harder for them to detect. The NPCs may come aboard your ship and might be quite dumb. They might not know where these compartments are, but... Conversely, you might get an NPC who is very diligent and smart and knows to look everywhere or specifically goes for these zones, in which case you would potentially need to move the contraband as he's searching or risk losing it or getting done for some form of crime. Also, if they're scanning your ship at the same time, they may have an idea where undeclared items are if they detect them. So they go, well, they we know that this car goes here, but there's also something detected underneath which is undeclared. So... Um, they, they might go look straight for that. Potentially being able to bribe customs might be a thing too. Also, they want to be able to have cargo containers which spoof other cargo types. So a crate might appear to be waste, but it could actually be contraband. And this might only appear on a scan. Oh, it's waste. But if the customs actually um, did a full search, they might open the crate and see what it is. You may be able to decoy customers into searching crates that are, are entirely legal in an attempt to waste their time because after a while of your ship being searched, the customs will just eventually leave. They won't check everything, um, although they potentially could. Um, you can avoid landing zone checks by landing outside of a city, for example, and then um, trying to bring it into the city through less secure areas, whether that's a, a less secure checkpoint or tunnels under the city or something. We did learn some other bits as well from the town hall. Uh, hacking is planned to allow you to be able to open doors, locks and bypass security and will require equipment and uh, to perform some form of mini game or some hands on sort of like um, play. Design of ships that don't have their mechanics for their primary gameplay fleshed out yet. So like data running, for example, they require a lot of design prep work um, and they try to make those ships as future proof as possible. So it also gives them the opportunity to explore various ways that a mechanic might evolve when the final mechanics for data running, for example, again, come online. They may tweak the Herald and the Mercury, but these should be extremely small tweaks. There's like 1% of the ship might change and they don't have to remake the ships or anything. I hope that info on the Mercury and some of the plans and ideas behind smuggling cargo and data were interesting. Please feel free to ask questions or tell me what you think down below in the comments. 
I really like this ship and will probably replace my Cutlass Black and Herald um, that I have with one of these instead. Be sure to check out Shadow. It's a cloud-based alternative to getting or upgrading your gaming PC. It allows you to leverage the power of a, a GeForce 1080 at the moment and a powerful Windows 10 PC on almost any device so long as your internet connection is good enough. It works with Star Citizen Alpha 3.2 and with 3.3 coming with object container streaming, it's only going to get better. If you do try it out, be sure to use the code BOARDGAMER to get a discount. The links to more info in the description below. Every month we have a giveaway for August. It's for a Saber Raven. All you need to do is be subscribed to my YouTube channel and comment on any of my videos during the month for a chance to win. A huge thank you to my Patreons whose continued support helps me run the channel. More regularly starting this month, there will be exclusive content, early videos, polls, and ways to influence the channels for both my Patreons and something new to YouTube, channel memberships and subscriptions. It is another way to support creators, giving viewers more options, as well as giving them some emotes and badges. I'll be normalizing appropriate rewards between Patreon and the channel membership service where I can so fans wanting to provide greater support won't lose out whatever medium they choose. Thank you so much for your continued support guys and for watching. Please take care and I'll see you in the verse.